First of all, huge congratulations on delivering a masterpiece. Thank you. <laughs> it's my first film, you know, so this is just blowing me away. What inspired you to write this hauntingly captivating story? I had children of four and one at the time, and I think my mind was just so full of motherhood and trying to find some way to capture the extraordinary change you go through when you become a mother and how you're sort of broken and remade by the experience and how it's claustrophobic and it's also full of pleasure. And so when I heard about a real a real captivity case of the Fritzl case in Austria, I thought, oh, raising a child in a locked room, that's like a perfect image for for what everybody does, but just in a more extreme way, you know? It's rare for aut authors to actually adapt um, their own bestsellers for the big screen. So what made you want to write the screenplay? I thought I was in a strong position because I had written this bestseller. So I thought, you know, if, if I try, if I go ahead and start, <laughs> maybe I'll get away with it. No, it is rare, but I think it's becoming maybe a little bit more common. I think more authors nowadays have a genuine enthusiasm for cinema as one of the many forms they can write in, rather than being snobby and thinking, oh, films are low, you know? So um, I think it's something an author should only do if she genuinely loves cinema. Um, but I feel I've learned so much about the pros and cons of each of these arts from working with the director in particular um, he's a huge book lover as well um, and I think he really guided me in how to you know not just literally copy something from a book into a screenplay but how to find a cinematic equivalent for it. What's the main theme of the story that uh, resonates in both the screenplay as well as in the book? Um, I think in a way the two are very similar and it's it is, it's a love story it's an extraordinary love story um, even though it's got these trappings of crime, we never allowed the crime to kind of set the terms for the whole thing. Um, it's all about the mother and the child. And I think nowadays, so many men can really relate to that because fatherhood has become so much more of a hands-on, you know, baby holding business. Um, and so I think for our generation, a lot of men as well as women know what it's like to go through that extraordinary change where you just commit yourself to this one small life. What was it about Brie and Jacob that made them the perfect mother-son role? Well, I remember Lenny saying to me that we have to cast somebody who can do comedy for Brie. And I said, comedy, really? And he said, yeah, we need somebody warm, natural, and bubbly who has been put in a situation of great tragedy where she's had to develop these extraordinary strengths. But we don't want somebody who looks like she was born to be tragic, you know? So I think he was so right in going for somebody who's got this warmth and bubbliness. And Jacob, you know, we were making all our plans based on the assumption that we could find some genius child who was, you know, small enough and natural enough to pretend to be a five-year-old. So, uh, you know, I was terrified we wouldn't find him. And I was so relieved when I saw those audition tapes. And he was just, there was no comparison between him and any of the others. He was phenomenal. And he, was. one nice thing is that he genuinely likes and enjoys the business of acting. You know, nobody's having to force him into it. So he has this irrepressible, playful quality. What was the most challenging aspect of adapting the screenplay? Um, everyone thought the first half would be a big technical challenge because you're in one right. room, but dramatically the first half is actually terribly clear. You know, the, the, the way the danger tightens around them and then they plan to escape. The second half is much more complicated because there's a kind of a natural anticlimax. They get out and they have a slight feeling of, well, what do we do now? You know, so uh, we had to find a way to kind of gently chart our way through that without, you know, rushing on too much, but without losing that sense of, you know, tension as well. For audiences who haven't read the book, what do you think they like most about the film? I think it manages to take, you know, the very ordinary stuff of parenting. You know, the most basic negotiations about here, have an apple, no, I want some toast. And it puts it all in this extraordinarily dramatic framework where you're sort of like, ah, never mind about the toast, you have to save his life, you know. <laughs> so I think it's a bit of a revelation when it comes to stories about parenthood. And I think it also it manages to take the kind of storyline of rape and captivity and turn it around so much that it's all about the woman and her strength and not about the, the pervert keeping her captive. That, that's what came across so well in this book, yes. What's next for you? Actually, I'm writing a children's book now, um, and it'll be my first book that has illustrations, so that's another kind of collaboration too. I think it's really important when you've had a success to ask yourself, you know, to learn a whole new set of skills and always keep yourself in that state of slightly, you know, <laughs> nervous, will I get away with this? Thank you so much for chatting. My pleasure. It is definitely an amazing film. Thank you.